Uh, when, I was to, when I was going to the courts, I remember I said, why I'm in prison? Why I'm in jail? You know, I want to come out. I want to get out. I want to go back, do what I used to do. You understand? Yeah. But bro, I, I was there for nearly a year. Yeah. yeah. Do you so, think you would have converted without going to prison? Or? No, I'm not a revert. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I was born, no, no problem. Okay. I, I, I mean, I was, ra I was raised as a Muslim, yeah. yes. However, I was not practicing. Right, okay. I was not practicing and, uh, and I used to pray. You understand? I used to pray on off, but just before I went to jail, yeah. I stopped praying completely. You understand? I was too busy in central London. Yeah. Literally, I used to go at night, come back five o'clock in the morning, I'm just sleeping. Oh, yeah. The whole day. Oh. I remember once I had to go for a meeting. Yeah. You know, I had to go to the council. And they tell me, come, you know, council, you can't go night time. You have to go morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a hot day and it was a sunny. Wallahi, yeah. I came out. Bro, my eyes started hurting. Because for years I'm sleeping at night. I went back. I said, forget him, man. Huh? That's, yeah, trust me. Because I used to sleep five o'clock in the morning, wake up eight o'clock in the evening. Go back to Central London, you understand? But something God given, you know, there's something within us, a Muslim or a non Muslim, all of us we have that, called a natural inclination. Naturally, you think, you know what? What I'm doing is bad. You understand? Like, what? This is not life. Sleeping at the daytime, and it's going nighttime doing crazy stuff. So you know what I used to always say, because I had bad friends around me, very bad, you know. I used to take some drugs, you know, I used to always pray to Allah to stop. But always when I used to go back home, I used to think there's a verse in the Quran. It mentions, is it equal? Those who are praying to their creator, to their God at night, with those who turn away from their God. So I used to always think about it. I think at night, some people are praying night prayer. And me coming from a crazy lifestyle, going back home, what I'm doing? But I cannot get out of it because my surrounding is not helping me. Then what happened? I went inside. You know, that's what Allah said in the Quran. Perhaps you hate something which is good for you. I disliked it. I, you know, it, it's crazy because literally I was with my friend standing. We that's how crazy this thing, yeah? We're standing. My bus, 94. You know, I don't talk about details, but today I'm, I'm going to tell you, show you Islam, how it changed people's life. 94 across the road from me. I'm standing here, literally, like f three steps. I, I, so I said to my friend Anthony, I said, Anthony, it's a bus, I'm going to go home. He said, chill, chill. I said, listen, we just done some crazy stuff. I need to go. He said, no, I haven't done nothing. I'm literally, a few seconds later, four vans of the police to this side that blocked. And I told my friend, they're coming for us. He said, no, they're not coming for us. <laughs> they arrested us, straight away in. My trial was seven months. Then I done nearly a year. Then I come out. But Islam, you have to. That's why it's not, it's not about just personal experience, even socially, even individually, collectively. You know, I always mention Islam came to preserve five things. This, this is very powerful, true Islam is from the Creator. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? Means that the one in Islam, the oneness of God, we have to keep it pure. We don't we don't worship Muhammad. We don't pray to any creation. We pray to the Creator alone. That's why paganism, politism is forbidden. You know, atheism is forbidden. Islam came to preserve intellect. That's why alcohol and drugs is forbidden. Islam came to preserve wealth. That's why interest and gambling is forbidden. Islam came to preserve marriage. That's why fornication, adultery is forbidden. Because adultery and fornication breaks marriages, cause destruction within the families, yeah? Islam came to preserve life. That's why killing people unjustly is forbidden. These five things in our, in our society, we call it destroyer of societies. And now, when you don't worship God correctly, and you're not a servant of your creator who knows everything, you start following your desires. And the outcome of following our desires, that literally today we can say this okay, next day we can change. Because we're following our desires, who, who Satan can play with it, yeah. okay? So, when you have no creed, the true creator in your life, you'll be confused. Secondly, alcohol is bad for us individually and collectively, all right? Gambling is bad for us individually and collectively. Interest, make the rich richer, poor poorer. Yeah, yeah. So it may, it's bad for us individually and collectively, yes. All of these vices I have mentioned, there is some people are benefit from it. I will speak about that. Likewise, uh, uh, fornication, adultery is bad for us individually and collectively. 
So how come these five things, even if we know, if even though we know, it destroy our societies, destroy us individually, collectively? How come we live in around in the world, not just is allowed, is being propagated and glamorized? Do you know why? Because those who are in power are making a money, making a money out of it. They know. I'm, I'm, they, they, these people are going to suffer with alcohol. Yeah. They're going to suffer with interest. But as long as I'm making money out of it, yeah. I don't really care. No, no. That's why majority of times, those who are very hostile to Islam, those who are in power, those who are in charge, yeah. because they look at Islam as a threat for them. Even though Islam is good for us individually and collectively. The question we ask ourselves, how many that existed 1,400 years ago? who couldn't read and write. He's coming with his perfect way of life. But on the other hand, we have these politicians who studied in the best universities around the world, yet they cannot resolve the problem. That shows it's powerful. It shows this religion is so powerful. Like, for example, you know, when you look at Islam, its foundation, the two pillars. You know, I, I, I never catch your name, sorry. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan. Jonathan, nice to meet you. What's your name, brother? Michael. Michael, yes, my name's Shamsi, nice to meet you. Imagine Michael or uh, Jonathan or Michael, yeah? Imagine in the house, you wake up tonight in your own room, there is a fire everywhere. And you try to save yourself, both of you. You couldn't save yourself. You gave up. You say, you know what? I I'm going to finish. I came and I saved your life, both of you. What would you say to me? Thank you. Thank you. Would you remember me all the time? Yeah. I saved your life, bro, yeah? Okay. How come we, don't, we are not grateful and remember who gave us a life for free? You see, forget, we forget, bro. That's why in the Quran, Allah said, If you try to count Allah's blessings on you, you will never be able to do so. No. You can't. Because uh, the example. You don't have to count the fingers. Bro, the air, you know, the oxygen that we breathe in and out. If you go to the hospital, you, you, get, you get charged for it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, literally. We're getting it for free in and out. If you want to put it in your tires, you have to pay it. Pay in the stereo, yeah, that's a good one as well. You have to pay. Literally, we're getting it for free. Yeah. From who? The creator. Yeah. Who wants for us to worship him and serve him. Secondly, if you want to buy a gift. Imagine you want to buy a gift for your mother. Yeah. Would you buy a gift that you love or your mother love? Your mom. Your mom. Likewise, if you want to worship the creator, be grateful to him. We should worship him the way he loves, yeah. not the way we love. Because the way he loves is absolute truth. Yeah. The way we love is subjective. You understand? That is what is the, is the Islamic foundation. That there is no one worthy of worship except Allah, Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. Alaikum. Then you learn step by step. I mean, there's many, that's what, what distinguishes Islam from any way of life. Islam is not based upon personal experience. Islam is based upon universal proofs. Yeah, yeah. When Allah mentioned the Quran, why these books from God, He gave a rational proofs, tangible proofs. I mean, I've asked this question to many people. Many people have not answered the question yet. Maybe you're going to answer it. I will see. You know the Quran, the Islamic book, the holy book. Do you know any book the size of the Quran? It has been memorized by 100 million of people, word for word. Yeah, but it has only 70,000 yeah. words. Do you, do you know any book like that? No, no, too. No book like that, you know? So, the Bible. so uh, uh, John's Gospel, no one memorized it. You know, the Quran. So the Quran, guess what? Allah mentioned that in the Quran 1,400 years ago. We have made Quran easy to be memorized. Now if you go to Africa, come to Britain, Europe, America, Asia, you see the Muslims at the age of 9 and 10, memorize the Quran word for word, yeah, letter for letter. Yeah, yeah. You know that, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you know why it's very important and why it's interesting? That some of them don't even speak the language. No, literally. And they, they memorize the Quran word for word. Yeah. Some of them, even if they do speak the language, they make mistakes in the pronunciation or in the letters. However, when they recite the Quran, they recite it perfectly. Yeah. It's like me, you bring me English dictionary. I'm reading it perfectly. A nice pronunciation, perfect reading. Then you bring me Shakespeare's poems. I'm reading it perfectly, reading it nicely. Then when I start having nice conversation, normal conversation, I say, me no coming, me no going. Me no here. If you know Shams, you're taking the mic. You just read English dictionary perfectly with the English accent. Now you speak like a foreigner, understand? <laughs> and where is the Quran? The Quran is, when you speak to the not Arab, you can see it's not Arab. But when he's reciting the Quran, he's reciting it perfectly. Why? Because Allah mentioned that. And Allah mentioned he will preserve the Quran. If the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims 
all of them decide to burn their scriptures, the only scripture that we can bring it back into the written form for memorization is the Quran. Do you know who can do it? Not the Muslim scholars. The Muslim scholars can do it, no doubt. Is the Muslim children, the age of 10 and 9. And that is one of the miracles of the Quran. And you know, there's another prophecy in the Quran. In the Quran. Allah, you know, there's many barriers against Islam. In Australia itself, but just Australia, 50 articles every day speaking about Islam in a negative way. Oh, really? Yeah, in Australia by itself. Yeah. 50 articles. How crazy look. Let alone Britain, let alone France, let alone Belgium, let alone. However, the far, even though there's barriers stopping people to accept Islam, the fastest growing religion in the Western world is Islam. Yeah. You know that it's mentioned the Quran 1,500 years ago. Allah, no, 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 this is a bad, bad. No. There was a study done by BBC. By BBC, majority of the reverts are British women. So this immigration is a lie. That is a lie. Immigration is a lie. Anyway, the point here is, I know it's hurting. I know it's hurting. I know it's hurting. Anyway, the point here is, the point here is that you can see, I have a, we do we do dawah. We give we teach people Islam every Friday outside Shabibu Station. We record it live every Friday at least. Is that here? Uh, no, uh, outside station, 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 station. At least one person or two person becomes a Muslim yeah. every Friday, and we'll be doing it for the last 15 years. Sometimes, you know, Alhamdulillah. So my point here is what we say to you. Likewise, I'll show you another prophecy of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there will come a time when interest will become widespread. Yeah. Even if you are not involved directly, or we are not involved directly, it will affect you. Yeah. By definition, today, if you open a bank account. If you open a bank account, you are involved in interest. Yeah. How many that existed 1,400 years ago was able to prophesy something that we can see right now? Because he said from God. Yeah. Yeah. What I said, does it make sense? Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. Yeah. What we say to you also, there's something I remind you and I remind all, everyone here, all of us standing here, how we're going to die yeah. and we buy ourselves. That's, promise, isn't it? That's it. Do you know where you can get an English Quran? We can get you, I'm going to get you after English one. I'm going to give you this one as well. Right. Inshallah. What we say to you that death can happen to us anytime. Yeah, literally. Well, no. Yeah, well, live, literally. Yeah, yeah, literally, literally. And the greatest crime against God when he turn away from him. So what we say to you, if it makes sense to you, it's clear to you. All of us are going to die. He's going to die, all of us. If it makes sense to you, and you say, you know what, I believe that is the truth. Yeah. And it makes, so, it makes sense. What is stopping you to become Muslim? No. Why don't you become Muslim? I have no reason not to. You want to become Muslim? I want to read the book, innit? Yeah, read the book. There's no problem here. Let me give it to you to make sure it is yours. Thank you. But I will say to you, you don't have to read the whole book to become Muslim. Okay. If it makes sense, because what you have to understand, what I've explained to you, yeah. the brother taught you, is the foundation. Yeah. I'm saying, look, if it makes sense, you believe the truth. And you say, you know what? You like you said, you have no reason. No, no. So if you leave this and you die, you have no excuse from the Creator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when I said I will save your life, you didn't say Shamsi, let me read a book or something. You said I will thank you straight away. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, if it make Islam makes sense and it's clear, he's not gonna be with you in the grave. I'm not gonna be with you. He is not. You're gonna be by yourself. Yeah. If it makes sense to you, I invite you to become a Muslim right now. Say Shahada ten, which you said it makes sense and you believe is the truth. Which is I bear witness, there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness, Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. Prophet Muhammad told us, when someone wants to become Muslim, Satan will try to put barriers. However, you said you have no barriers. Stop. So become Muslim, alhamdulillah. I'll just, uh, no, the camera, forget that, let's go this way. Forget that, let me give you the Quran. Forget the camera, let me give you the Quran. Come, Akhi. Alhamdulillah, just Baba used to pray even before. Alhamdulillah, they're very happy. I said, you made my day. He said, no, you made my day. Akhwa, music, music, it's Akhi. It was a nightclub, what? So Alhamdulillah for people to know because some people, Alhamdulillah, they accept Islam, Alhamdulillah, they took Shahada. May Allah... This is shaitan, yeah. So, you know, like I said, I'm very happy for you. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you. We'll give you a Quran, inshallah, read, inshallah ta'ala. They will be shy, but Alhamdulillah, they said it openly, they're both them. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you. Yeah. The, the reason I want to say openly for the camera, for people to see that Alhamdulillah, there is no English people except Islam, black people except Islam. Islam is not only for Arabs or something. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Barakallahu feekum.